Hi guys, John here. Today I'm going to look at how you can add camera shake to your cameras and have it on one track and assign all of your cameras to it. So you just use this one shake um, camera to control all your other camera shakes. And the reason that I want to do this is so that I can actually bake the shake because if you ever work with cinematics and you have to do things like compositing you might want to re-render the same scene more than once and what you'll find is that every time that you render it out you get a different camera shake each time so if you're doing things like compositing then uh, things aren't going to line up and it's just going to be a mess so let's get on it let's have a look and see what we can do so I have added a camera to this scene just real basic movement from left to right and you can see that is on this transform track so to add a camera shake if you don't know how to do it you would go to your content browser right click and select blueprint class and then if you just uh, type in here shake and look for camera shake base and there's other ones you can select but we're going to do this one because that's the one I know how to do so click select just give it a name and call it shake one and then you want to double click on that and I'm just going to expand that so you can see it and then in this case we're going to choose the Perlin noise and then you've got settings for your amp amplification of your shake how much you want to shake it about and amplitude frequency for your different axis and you've got rotation so this method that I'm going to show you doesn't work with the rotation okay and I'll explain to you why in a bit um, so I'm going to set the rotation to zero on all of them and I'm just going to add in a high value for the amplitude just so that we can actually see what's happening um, but that's probably a little bit extreme in a real case scenario so um, you probably won't want to do it that much so I'm just yeah just hit compile save now um, so what you would normally do you'd come down to your camera component and you would come up to sorry come to your camera component press the plus symbol and then you come up to camera shake and then you find your blueprint actor that you just created and you select that and as you can see it's the duration's not very long so let's just go back and change that so we come down to timing if you want it to cover the entire length of your sequence just hit zero and then just recompile save and now you can see that this shake actor covers the entire length that you choose to have it so let's have a look at it and you can see it's working it's wobbling about like crazy as we would expect um, but yeah if we wanted to bake that out now so that it does the same shake each time this is the way that I found to bake it you would select the track and then on the spanner you'd click that and then you'd select bake transform and then you want it to do it to all keyframes otherwise it's going to only going to apply it to the existing keyframes on your sequence and as we can see we've only got one two so I'm just going to click OK and Oh, what happened there? Let's just undo that set. Something didn't happen right. Let's do it again. Bake transform. All keys. 
click OK, that's it. All right. So here you can see you've got um, all these keyframes added and it's basically um, baked the transform information from this track that we had selected. But as you can see, something weird has happened in our sequence. Now the camera has shifted, it's not where it was before. So if you've got an existing sequence already set up and you want to add like a baked camera shake to it and you want to do it that way, it's not going to work. So uh, let's have a look at something else that we can try. Okay, so if you just undo that. So we want to get rid of that camera shake track and to do this right just a little important tip this has to be possessed by the level and not spawned by the sequencer so if you see a little like a little lightning bolt thing on your camera track it's because you've added it in the sequencer right um, so you don't want it to be like that you if if it is like that you want to convert it to possessive so you see it says convert to spawnable that's because we're already possessed by the level if it's not um, possessed by the level if it's possessed by the sequencer then that will say convert to possessive instead okay so if there's a little lightning or uh, lightning bolt on it right click on it select convert to possessive um, word of warning when you do that I think you do lose your camera settings like your bloom and any other settings you might have, might have like exposure settings so just bear that in mind. I think you'll still have your keyframes but you'll lose the camera settings. So the reason we want to have it possessed by the level is because we're going to parent it to another camera okay. This camera is going to be like a sort of um, a sort of hidden camera that we're just going to use for its transform. So let's add in another camera. So you just come up here and cinematics, cine camera actor, and over here, if we rename it, and I'm going to call it shake underscore camera just so that we know what it's called and what it's there for okay so we're not actually going to use the actual camera we're just going to use its transform so with that selected we're going to reset its position in world space so its coordinates are all zero 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 and now what we can do is we can take this camera and we can parent it to that one. So if you drop it on it, this one is now, its transform is now going to be affected by this one. And because we can add camera shake to a camera, then anything that's parented to it is also going to have that amount of shake added onto it. Okay, so with that selected we want to add it to the sequencer and you can do it up here actor to sequencer shake camera sometimes I just click the keyframe button to add it but I think I'll do it this way so just click shake camera and let's just have a look that should be seeing what we saw originally and that's because we reset the coordinates to zero zero zero. If the coordinates of this shake camera were anything other than zero, then when you parent the object, it will offset its position. So that's why we change everything to zero. Okay. So now with uh, this in the sequencer, if we come to camera component and we add our camera shake here which I think is this one 
and now we play it back you can see at the moment it's not doing anything and that is because we haven't baked that, that out yet so if we now uh, make sure that's selected come up to here and then do bake transform make sure you select all keyframes click OK and now you can see that the camera shake has been passed on and if you add in any other cameras to your scene you can just parent that to the shake camera and that amount of shake will be applied to all your cameras now the reason that I disabled the rotation on the shake actor is because if I just open Photoshop I'll demonstrate it to you so here we are in Photoshop and I'm just gonna draw a line right now imagine this point here is your parent actor which is the one that's shaking right and imagine this is the rotation of say the roll axis yeah which is going in this direction now if you're this actor and it rolls by like one degree it's not gonna seem like a lot but because let's say your camera that's parented to this one is all the way over here then this is what happens you get this huge movement in your shake because you're parented to an object that is in a different location and whenever that object rolls um, you're gonna roll with it but from that distance so the distance that you're gonna roll is gonna be you know it's gonna be a lot more than than what you would want so but if you just if you're happy with just using the location uh, for your camera shake then this is a great way to do it and because it's baked it means you can render your scene over and over again and you will always get the same camera shake result okay um, and you can see that it is actually shaking if we come in and look at these coordinates and you can see what it's doing cool thing about this is because you've still got access to the keyframes as well you can edit them so if there was one little moment where you didn't want the shake to be a certain way you could just like you could just tweak it so yeah, uh, just came across this today. I thought it might be useful information for someone because uh, this has been something that's been bugging me when I'm trying to composite cinematic stuff. Um, but now I know that I can bake the camera shake into the sequence and uh, yeah, resolve that issue. So yeah, this is John from uh, Orogenic VFX and it's easy when you know how. Like and subscribe for more content. Cheers.